been? How you been? Good, good. Not too bad. Well, before we start, guys, whoever you are, if you can help Mahela out with this for quite a while, he's been struggling with this. Now, Captain Ali is the captain of the ship. The captain of the ship is Captain Ali. What is the name of the ship? Now, Mahela Jayawardana, he's a genius with the bat. He's an artist. But... He still doesn't know the answer to that. So if you can help him out before we go out from here, that will be great. Captain Ali is the captain of the ship. The captain of the ship is Captain Ali. What is the name of the ship, Mahila? I'm sure it's... it rings a bell. You probably <laughs> struggling with that, but I think I know what it is. So anyway. <laughs> well, we'll leave, if you know it, we'll leave that for now. Well, that's a little riddle for you to figure out. Um, what have you been up to, MJ? I've been struggling to get hold of you because yesterday I was trying to get this in order and oh my God, you gave me headaches. I was not sure whether you'll stand me up. What are you up to? Well, I thought you got internet in Australia. What are you doing? You only get connected to Sri Lankan cricket when, when you have to work, is it? It's, it's a little bit like that. Sometimes that's a good thing, yeah. isn't it? I have a bit of a conflict of interest. No, you can't like really mess around with Sri Lankan cricket, so... <laughs> <laughs> There is nothing like that. I think uh, for now, uh, I've, I've had a good run. Just being able to do my little thing, uh, stick in my little corner and uh, call the game as yeah. it is. Yeah, no, no, I had some um, meetings yesterday. So, but I messaged you in the night. So you knew. Yeah, but I'm all... speaking for you. Your night. Actually, guys, I, I'm in Sydney. So that's four and a half hours uh, um, ahead, really. I'm struggling in keeping my... Uh, <laughs> my laptop in order well anyway okay uh, that's better yeah so meetings is that what you're up to yeah i had a big meeting yesterday i mean uh, came out pretty well um it was a very productive and uh yeah i think uh managed to work related yeah i guess so i think um you know you played the game for such a long time and you're part of Sri Lankan cricket, um, you probably can voice your opinion on certain things and um, that's what happened. Okay. So uh, my, my idea, Myla, like I said, I'd like to switch off. We'd look at uh, different things, a lighter side of you um, and um, probably see what made you this person. I think, I think that's uh, the most important thing. Um, how's golf going though? Um, I haven't played golf for us. I mean, everything's been... It's ...some time now. So, um, but I've been involved with the, the club. I've been part of the committee um, in a different way. So, we've been trying to make sure the club's been in good nick and all that. So, hopefully, once um, Colombo curfew get relaxed and, and all that. I think uh, government is quite keen on starting recreational uh, sports. So I think golf is something that because you're outdoors, can play, you know, with distance and stuff like that. Um, not a physical sport. Um, hopefully be on the golf course pretty soon. When are we going to get a game? Because uh, I, I know you're a little bit worried about your handicap and playing against me after seeing that flat hit uh, um, that, that kept going on and on in uh, Digana the last time we were around, weren't we? I'll tell you one thing. One thing I'm not worried about is your golf game. <laughs> <laughs> That's my definitely. I, I can probably I can probably play left-handed and still beat you. All ah, right, but what's this bandit story though? Sangha Ooh. messaged me. Sangha messaged me and said, "Aru hora, bandit." He is the bandit. He still hasn't got a handicap. So it's very difficult for him to actually have an argument with anybody. It's handicap when, when he's not playing off a handicap. So I think the first thing to for him is to try and get his handicap sorted out. And that much I have to be like, uh, we need to have a presidential commission or something like that, an independent uh, commission to, to sign that off because... Um, He's, he's very, very bad at that. The Sangha Dhora? Proper Hora. He's been taking money <laughs> off a lot of people. Uh, quite a few friends um, have lost to him uh, purely because of his handicap. Bogus handicap, that is. 
Great, great, great. Um, it must be really tough though, because I know you're a sports lover. A uh, lot of guys have uh, messaged in asking uh, about Manchester United and you, uh, how, what you follow. Now, without live sport, without live, live news to read, even with rugby, um, how would you keep yourself busy, Myla? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. I think we all love sports and uh, would be great. But I think um, um, the last dance, the Netflix series, was quite uh, fascinating watching um, Jordan's story. Mm -hmm. Uh, was something nice. Uh, yeah, a lot of movies, um, but at the same time, I've got other work as work-related stuff, which we have to be part of. Um, yeah, I mean, keeping yourself busy, training, fitness, and all that. Training. So it, it's been good. Training. What do you do? Not like you, Russ. We, we do. We do. Yeah, I know. I know. You do. You hate running. You hate the gym, and all that. But uh, yeah, but uh, others have to, you know, really work hard to stay fit. Did you see what happened to Muri? No, I didn't. <laughs> well, uh, Mario messaged me saying that, uh, or rather spoke to me and said um, uh, he'd bumped into Muri, uh, who's been limping. He's had both knees operated, apparently, over the last couple of months. Really? Mario, of course, for those who don't know, is a, a, a friend of ours who's also a physio, was the physio of Sri Lanka. And he had advised Muri not to run six days a week after retirement. Well, I think, yeah, I think Murli, Murli can get a bit uh, eccentric when it comes to certain things. I think he was pushing it too much. Um, but I think I think it's always good, Russ. You know, it's just rather than eating your chocolates and all that and just blogging <laughs> in your couch, it'd be nice to, you know, run around and, you know, sweat you a know, little. You know, you know, my kids hide all the chocolate chip cookies at home. I got right. to ask permission from them. They give me one a day. <laughs> That's how bad it is. One slab a day it was in the playing days. Yep. Um, it, it it certainly was like that. But uh, Muri was not a big trainer when we played though. No, but he got into a habit where he was um, running. He and I was running in the same area as well for a while. Um, so he had that habit. He was, he was going to drop his kids at school in the morning and used to run together for a while. So he, he kept doing that but he he's not an endurance runner so he runs like certain sprints and you know certain distances he has very calculated method of what he needs to do and then he'll stop and he'll just walk away so pretty sure he was trying to sprint himself he's, he's too old for that now i think yeah talking about getting old 27th what's the plan 27th of may 43 i don't think nothing's going to change in colombo for the next week it'll be pretty much the same um, nothing much. I think, you know, just uh, another day, I guess. Another day. Come on, Myla. Big birthday party. Nothing planned. Isn't Java bringing you food? You, you apparently eat everything that he delivers. That's what you've been doing during the lockdown? No, 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 no. Nothing like that. I don't know where you heard that. Uh, no, I think, I mean, things are a bit relaxed. You can go and do your shopping and stuff on certain days in, in Colombo. So, yeah. Probably try and see if I can go and visit my parents on that day, and that's about it. Hmm, did you have a fight with Maxwell? Well, someone's saying, tell us about the fight. Anyway, we leave that for now. My I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We left you know, fighting. You know, so I can't remember me fighting. You never fight. You always fight when you're playing at warm ups, everything. You, you are always fighting, that's for sure. Anyways, yeah. my love, uh, to be honest, it's been a ple pleasure knowing you as a youngster. I think we first met when you were 14. Uh, 1992, when you first played first 11 cricket. And um, uh, you came to the home of cricket. I think only place, I, I mean, it was a special place for you to come and play cricket. That's where we met at, at Bamalapitiya. Where that, uh, the, 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 the Bay Rekana Lake used to go behind, that smelly thing. Is that the place, home of cricket? <laughs> <laughs> uh, lush, green, brilliant. Um, uh, right. wicket. You had a half century, didn't you? Yeah, it was a, it was a bit of a uh, fire of baptism. I think you guys had a really good pace attack. I remember Mario bouncing every other ball. Um, yeah, it was a good, good game. I think we had a very good uh, outing that time. And yeah, as a youngster, as a fresher, it was, um, yeah, it was a eye opener for me. So what, where I'd like to go with this is, Myla, um, looking back at our school days, how cricket was, and 
for you to become the person you have and i i've had the pleasure of watching you uh, from that time to go on and achieve a lot of things and earn so much respect and um, it, it's a it's a really a, a great position to be in and still to be able to talk to you like we did when we were 16 17 18 uh just like that it it really is incredible so now what would you say um um uh, made you the person you are in terms of cricket and also after um well i think just the upbringing i guess i mean we all played the game of cricket not thinking that we will play for sri lanka or anything like that i think you know we just played because we enjoyed cricket and it was a it was a way of us expressing ourselves um as kids and and uh, we, i mean both of us went to to schools that you know sports was uh, massive but it I mean not obviously St Peter's more than cricket rugby was big at that time and then yes cricket but yeah Nalanda, cricket was with nalanda when we played yeah yeah so cricket was only nalanda this thing so um yeah i mean that was it i mean only later on when we played under 19 cricket and all that that we you know became a bit more serious about the game and probably got complicated as well but um the thing i always tell youngsters now as well is is about enjoying cricket i think we all enjoyed playing cricket at that age and and it wasn't a, a stressful outing whenever we go to play a match i mean where the crowds were, were there that was good yeah we had crowds i think that's something mm. diff- at at, at campbell park apna gadol gaya hua puru ke ande pa so uh, uh, <laughs> that's really by the campbell park in the um well i think you know it was enjoyable and uh, it was good fun i think that's something that i i guess the modern day youngsters don't have is is lot of scrutiny around their games and social media and all that so we were lucky enough we were brought up in a era where it was less spoken about and and we just went along and you know played the game so um we had half a page uh, match match coverage though each yeah, match that's a, that, that that was what we looked forward to yeah saturday sunday papers yes so um yeah i think that was the upbringing i guess i mean so when you when you start something like that you know nothing's going to change in your lifestyle and and you tend to try and keep things simple as much as possible in terms of your talent and how you approached your game uh was was it more trusting yourself you you knew you had the flair uh did you have that arrogance uh, when i say arrogance it's um, arrogance in a good way the confidence yeah ras i mean i i mean it's 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 i i guess like i was criticized a lot even when i was playing for the national team the way i played sometimes and uh, i was exactly the way i played when i played at when i was playing for school um probably curtel a little bit got a bit more mature and understood my game plan a bit better but my style of play the shots and all that i i was a player who wanted to dominate or who wanted to take control of things and and i i went about doing that and yeah i was got, i got criticized a lot and number of times and especially uh, the way i played odi cricket not so much test cricket but odi cricket uh but that's how it was and 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 the role that i had to play as well in the team uh, dictated how i had to play sometimes because you had guys who were uh, uh, settled and who, who could bat through and then some of us had to bat around that and and make sure that you know you you keep up with the rate so it was more of a tactical thing as well and i enjoyed it i'm not complaining at all because i i enjoyed that role and i enjoyed the way i played and if i had to do it again i'll probably do it the same way so because if you if you're not enjoying and if you are not happy about what you're doing and if you try to be a different player i don't think you would have been able to uh, achieve what i've achieved so i've i've thoroughly enjoyed it. i've never changed my game that much since the time i played for school and the way i finished at international level well i'd probably have to agree seeing you from those days but um from the age of 14 15 we kind of knew that uh, you you would go on uh, to play for sri lanka uh, and and go on to do wonderful things during your school time uh, something exciting can you give us 
an insight, something that uh, um, might have even ended your career early. Were you naughty? Was there anything like that? I mean, the, uh, I mean, I mean we, we travel out of Colombo for games. Yeah. I've mean, just we, been in my ear, you know. We had, <laughs> we, pro we probably had one or two outings, but I think. The, How about St. Anthony's Candy? In yeah, St. Anthony's Candy. The worst thing is, guys, what like. What happened with the man in charge? Yeah. <laughs> Viraj and them influencing us. I don't think we should be talking. So Viraj about. was your was your opening bowler, who was all, who yeah. was actually my batch. I'm a few years older. Too. And, Just and for guys, those who don't. Yeah, guys like Java, Viraj, and Sudarsh, Sudam around. It it was a very bad influence um, as a fresher. Um, yeah, we were sent to bring some beverages um, in the one of the nights after you, the game. You had to pay for it. I had to pay for it, and then had to bring. And we had to bribe the security guards because you can't go out. And uh, when we were bringing those certain beverages and, um, and the master in charge walked out. So I knew that if I get caught, there was two of us, two freshers. If you get caught with those beverages in hand, um, that would have been my full stop for that season at least. So I was like playing hide and seek with him and going around pillars at St. Anthony's. Luckily, the, it was an old building, so you had those massive pillars. So I had to hide around that pillar for about 10, 15 minutes before I managed to, you know, go in the back door. So I do remember that. I know Viraj and all of them were laughing their head off. Uh, but Ali another? No, you don't get paid. All the freshers have to buy the stuff at that time. Ah, <laughs> I'm sure you'd have done the same thing. You've been a senior. <laughs> no. yeah, we were Catholic school, man. Good team. Good, good yeah, school. We, we don't muck around. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> I'll have to ask Brigesh and all those guys. Under 19, our first tour that we went together was to Malaysia and Singapore in 1993. Um, it was after that that you were quickly picked um, to play against South Africa under 23s who came over with uh, uh, some really talented stars. Pollock was there. Uh, I think 10 of them went on to play. Klusner, uh, Telemachus, the list Callis. goes on and on. Boy, boy, uh, yes, Callis was their youngster. Callis was their you at that time. And they were talking big things about uh, Jack. Um, your memories of that? Yeah, I think it was a... I think I wasn't in the Sri Lankan under 23. I actually played a warm-up game against them because I was, I was only 16 at that time, 15 or 16. Get so I still, it. yeah, I still remember. Mind your language. I know you, you like to speak Sinhalese, but you know, some of the Sinhalese you speak, you have to be very careful with. There are a lot of. Like, can we talk in Tamil? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Konjang, konjang. Okay. Konjang, so, konjang. Uh, That's enough. Nalla uh, okay, Yeah, get I mean, to the point. I, I remember, I remember that game uh, was at Bloomfield um, and it was a practice warm-up game. Um, and that probably was that defining moment, me being an under-19 player, given an opportunity in a senior team to play a warm-up game. And that innings uh, was something special. And I, I still remember that it was, it was a good attack and um, a lot of people were watching that match, I remember. Um, at this was 95, time. right? Oh, yeah, probably 95, yes. Yes, 94, 95. Yeah. Test debut, special match, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, especially in the sense that I sat there for two hour, two days with my pads on uh, before I got to go and bat. But uh, you can't complain when you had the Indians, you know, frustrated out there for two days. But yeah, amazing, amazing test match. Um, India batted well as well. Everyone forgets that, you know, India scored 600. 537, 537? Uh, no, I think it was uh, 580 or 630, something like that. Yeah. Because I remember that why we couldn't declare um, was that we only passed their score on the fifth day morning. Something so this is like the game that we're, what my, the game we're talking about is again, Sri Lanka went on to score 952. Myra yeah. made his debut there. So we, we, I think we went past their score 600 something on the fifth day morning. So then decided to, to bat through. I still know, even to date, I, Rahul and all of them curse us for keeping them on the field for three days. Um, 
Um, but yeah, it was a memorable match. I think Sanat and Roshan batted brilliantly, um, and everyone else after that just cashed in, and and uh, I was the lucky one, I guess. I I was the twelfth man. Um, I still don't get why we call the game off an hour early. We could have scored thousand miles. Those opportunities will never come again. <laughs> <laughs> the scoreboard would have had a problem because there's only three, three digits on those scoreboards. It was not electronic one, so you can't put the thousand. They had to put like three zeros, and that's it. No, but I think it's fair enough. I think you know there was no result in that game, and for us to to go through. But I, I still remember. I think the tour before that, you went to West Indies, right, with the the team. Yes. So you... I'm Test player number sixty-eight. You're sixty-nine. Yes. And um... yes, but you 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 ditched me. I didn't <laughs> ditch you. Match. Actually, Kurtney Ambrose and I think Walsh, you know, took care of you of our senior Walsh, boys. Walsh. Yeah, so I think Hashan got injured. Hashan had a, um, a forearm injury, got hit. Um, he had a fractured forearm. So that's, that's why, why I got, uh, yeah, got to play. Yeah, so then I got my opportunity when on the return when the Sri Lankan team came back. So yeah, I mean, those are opportunities that you don't think that you will get. I was called up for the squad out of nowhere um, in that Indian series um, to replace a senior player who was injured and um, you had to grab those opportunities, I guess. And you did. Okay. Test cricket, ODI cricket or T20? Differentiate yeah. them. No, not your favourite. Differentiate uh, them. Oh. There's a huge difference. Um, test cricket is where you get tested um, mentally, physically, um, you know, Tactically as well, long times and try and you know be patient, um, test your nerves. There's no other sport in the world which will go for so many days. Uh, whereas, you know, you 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 have to wake up every day in the morning on a test match and then turn up mentally fresh somehow. Um, Stuff on the bowlers, um, not so much on the batsmen, but definitely much more tougher on the bowlers, especially the fast bowlers, um, test cricket. One day cricket is obviously something different. Um, tactically approach, the tempo is different, um, how you approach. But I think in the recent times, the introduction of T20 cricket has evolved in a, such a way that a lot of people have changed their game, have changed even latter part of my career as well we we would change the way we play test cricket as well i think the tempo to test cricket has changed a lot um recent times guys are scoring scoring nearly like 350 400 runs a day uh, which wasn't happening those days i think 250 280 290 was a good score on a day's play uh, but it's much more attacking much more result oriented I mean, the skills of the bowlers are much better uh, T20 cricket has brought about fielding skills, uh, um, higher standards. You're not letting things go now that easily. So, yeah, those are the different. I think skill-wise, you get tested a lot in T20 cricket. Because if you're a bowler, I think, you know, you have to be spot on. You can't, you know, um, you can't miss those lens lines and executions that uh, you have to do. Um, so one day cricket is somewhere in the middle of a T20 and a test match where you need a bit of patience to bat longer, 50 overs, much more tactical, see how you can approach. There are certain situations in the game that you can manipulate in the sense that you have time. If you even make a mistake, you can come back into a game in a one day. But T20 cricket, you can't because it's such a shorter format. And test cricket is completely different. I think test cricket... I, I still feel that that's where you get tested properly as a cricketer. Your best innings, Myla. Go deep into it, not just mention it. How you felt, uh, why and what you had to do. You were challenged. Well, it's, it's a very tough question because I've, I mean, so many times I've been asked that and I, I still cannot say that this was my best knock because in test cricket, you had different scenarios, situations that I've played um, and you have certain innings that you know that, you know, is something special. And in one day cricket, it's the same. And T20 cricket, it's the same. So you have three different types of games that you played and you try to, um, you know, see what's best. I think whatever's 
I feel that taken the best out of me in, in situations is where you are put under pressure. And one of those innings is that the 100 I scored at Lords um, to save a test match. Um, and there was another 100 I scored against South Africa on a chasing um, effort. Um, after I scored the 374, I scored another 100 at the Oval when we were chasing 350. Um, and um, we we got the runs like last wicket. I remember Mali, Mali coming and hitting on drive. Um, uh, Maharuf was the non-striker. So, so those two hundreds I would I would rate and and the one that my first hundred against New Zealand at call uh, sixty seven. Yes, for me that really stands out. Yeah, you know, square that, Turner. Four reasons. I mean, it was a tough wicket to play, but you get tough wickets in different parts of the world and and you score runs. But I think for me because it's my first international hundred, um, that gives you a lot of confidence, saying that you belong here kind of feeling when you get that 100. So that's something special. Um, the World Cup 100 in the finals in India, because of the situation, the the match, the pressure, the, the whole works. And I felt really in control in that knock uh, from first ball to the last ball I faced. Um, I don't think I've even given a half a chance in, in that game. So it, it was in pure control of the situation and all that. And 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 probably the semi-final hundreds, uh, hundred in the 2007 yeah. in Jamaica against New Zealand. So those are few that I think was if you go down deep and think you know mentally you were challenged, physically you were challenged, and sometimes um, the situations were different, um, the pressure was different. So you, you tend to you know dig deeper um, to to score those runs. All right, tell us about your funniest moment on the cricket pitch. Oh, you're uh, always serious, my No, no, no. I've, I've had funny moments. I think I, I'm pretty sure you would have played that test series against New Zealand in 2003 in Colombo, where at the Oval, when Flem got. I, there was a tweet. No, no, I have a stop for that. Okay, so there was a tweet recently as well um, about that. I remember that innings, Flem got a 250. And, and two and a half days. Yeah, he, he did, but. The, the thing is, I dropped him. He gave at least eight chances in that knock of 250, right? I actually dropped him at least about six times. That was one of my worst fielding performances. I just couldn't catch anything that day. It just There were some catches was just like dollies. I just tried to do that and just fumbled off me. And there was one went over my head. I tried to turn around and catch it, hit on my head. I, I still remember I looked like... Uh, a real clown on the field that day. And uh, Flem still buys me drinks, by the way, because of that, because that's his only double hundred, I think, in his career. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I felt like that was just, when you look back at it, I, I still can't remember exactly some of the catches I missed. We have a couple of hard ones in the slips, you know, you dive and you drop, which is fine, fair enough. But I remember at least six, and all of them were off Flem. There was no other batsman either. Um, and if we had taken those catches, we would have won that test uh, match easily. Uh, but we, we made a real mess of that uh, match purely because I've just like kept dropping catches. Talking about uh, New Zealand and Flame, you went over to play a match with um, the All Blacks. How come you didn't take yeah, me off? The, knowing, me that, uh, knowing that I was such a big fan. Yeah, unfortunately, they just didn't... Um, they just didn't rate your uh, cricketing skills that much, Russ, even though you're an All Blacks fan. So <laughs> that's why they probably invited ah, me. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So you had, to, you had to come to a certain level for them to recognize to be an All Blacks fan and then the cricketing. So I guess, you know, Murali topped it all, 800 wickets. It was easy. And, he went uh, there and he did a hamstring. What's the point taking him? He's old. I, I told him, take it easy, but he just, you know, he's a show off, right? So he wants to show off that he can run fast. He was a, like, he boasted with the boys in the dressing room that he used to play wing um, when he was playing for his school, which he did actually. He was a, he was a winger for, for St. Anthony's. So um, he boasted. So when, when they saw him just casually jogging after a ball, you know, um, they all started laughing and he tried to, you know, 
um, show that he still got a little bit of pace in him and then pulled the hamstring. It was so funny. He, he didn't show it. He just came around to me and then said, I think I pulled my hamstring. I don't think I can walk. So I said, why didn't you just go for a bathroom break and just stay inside without coming back? So it was funny. Because I saw the clip and there was nothing about Murray. And, and like... Yeah, he bowled. He bowled, he bowled two <laughs> overs. He bowled two overs. Um, and, you know, they just couldn't play him at all. Picked up a wicket as well. Of uh, Grant, I think, Grant Elliott. And uh, it was his, he had crazy figures, two overs, um, four runs, one wicket or something like that. And then... Um, they kept him to bowl the last few overs in the match because they had lost wickets, so he didn't want to bowl morally um, because he would have polished them off. So, and he couldn't bowl the last two overs because he pulled his hamstrings. So it was funny. Okay, I, I could never ask you this. Now, um, when we go for training, you'd bring your bag out, your coffin, everything's a mess. But the day before, you take everything back to the hotel, whereas we have already left our stuff at the ground. Why yeah. was that? And why, even if you hit a four or a six, why the hell do you keep running to the other end to make your ground? I mean, you're not getting anything extra. What, what was all uh, that about? I never could ask you that. All right. Um, so the bag routine was something that I picked up when I was a kid as well. Um, so I, I would take it back and I would put everything together properly and, and bring it back because I had this notion where that I felt that like, you know, just on the day of the match, I just didn't want any of my pad straps or my bats or anything to be broken or not in a, in a, you know, usable manner at the game time. So I'm not distressed. I like, I, I just had that discipline where I just was neat and clean. Like, I don't know if you remember, I kept all my bats in a line on the wall. It was just, yeah. Uh, so it wasn't OCD, it was somewhere close to being OCD, but it was a routine that I'd make sure all my boots, the nails were there and all that, just didn't want to, so it was just a checklist. So I would take it back, put it the way I want to put it, and I'll bring it back to the game day. So I had that habit. The running habit was something that I picked up when I was about 14, 13, 14. So I, there's a season that I've, scoring runs but I used to get out after scoring a boundary um, and it happened quite often in that time two three matches and I felt that the adrenaline of hitting a boundary the next ball you tend to play the next ball with that same you know mindset um, and you tend to make a mistake you know trying to force something which is not there so for me the way I would try and make sure that that previous ball the boundary is over is by running to the other end and finishing that so in my mind I would say that that's finished it's like completing a single you're pretty much on the non-striker so, so you're talking to yourself yeah yeah no I know that <laughs> but the thing I didn't understand was like okay I, it was a habit and I continued doing it in international cricket but like when you score a boundary or a six against a bowler who's very chirpy and you tend to go to the other and you're going to get a year full, which I did not plan when I was a kid. But um, but I was okay with that. So I would get a lot of year full from a lot of the bowlers. Um, when I yeah, we also wanted, I'm batting with you. You're running from... <laughs> yeah, it Bad. used to be like that. Bad habits. No, it was good. It was good to, to watch that. Um, and also preparation for the game. Now, Sangha hits millions of balls. We know that. But you would never do that. It's just 10 catches, short catches where you'd get someone to hit it back at you. That was all your preparation? On the match day, yes. It was 20 catches. So I do all the other warm-ups and stuff like that. But um, I wouldn't hit anything off the ground because I, I had this mental thing that for me on the game day, the game starts when I walk in and play the first ball. So my mindset was that. So I wouldn't hit any uh, like practice shots or anything like that during warm-up. So my thing was I get those 20 catches, so I watch the ball. Um, that's my focus. And and then whenever I had to go and bat, I just walk in and just play the first ball. So it was just a mental preparation for me. So then I know I'm ready for that first ball kind of thing. So there's nothing. 
So I practice the day before, do all that. But on the day, I hit no balls. Just my first ball will be the first ball I face on the game. Right now, um, my lad, uh, put it out to our fans or your fans um, of what they'd like to hear from you. So a lot, a lot of them um, wanted to hear the summary of how our World Cup campaigns went, certain games, your six twenty four partnership with Sangha, uh, a deep uh, breakdown of that two thousand seven World Cup, two thousand eleven World Cup, twenty fourteen World Cup, two failed campaigns there. Um, why don't you pick one? Let's let's like get in deeply um, into one of those and see or try and um, uh, let our friends know uh, what happened, yeah. what could have happened. What do you want to pick? No, I think I think each and every World Cup was quite unique. I mean, if you go through them quickly, I think I, my first World Cup was the '99, and it was a disaster for us after being the world champions, and we made a lot of mistakes in that. So I, as a youngster, learned a lot from that World Cup. Um, there are a lot of things that we shouldn't do kind of thing. So 2003 was a complete turnaround from all that. And, and we did a lot of good things, lost in the semis, but we had a great campaign there in South Africa. Um, 2007 probably was the defining moment of us group together, uh, doing something special. And, um, and uh, I don't think anyone gave us a chance in that World Cup. From You were captain. Yes. And we went all the way to the finals and you know, it was a disappointing final. But I think we've learned a lot. We did a lot of right things, things in the sense that decision making. And more than that, it's just a very enjoyable World Cup. I think, you know, recently as well, I saw Mali was talking about the volleyball that we played every day in the afternoon. We spent a lot of time on the beaches, Myla. There was a time where we had two weeks of doing nothing but nothing. beach stuff. It was a long World Cup as well. I, I believe it was like eight weeks or nine weeks of cricket in that time because of traveling and different island hopping and stuff like that. So it was a very enjoyable World Cup, really enjoyed that, spending time with the group and doing lots of stuff and we were winning. So that was important. Um, then 2009, 8, we had Before a... Before you go to 2009, 8, I have a question. This has always been worrying me. I've been asking, I've been trying to advise Murli, but he never listened to me, Myla, but you were captain. Now, in the 2000 World Cup, um, in the group game, we played every team once and then we went to the semis and the finals. Yeah. In the group game against Australia, who got Gilchrist and Hayden out? Murli didn't play the game. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was so Russell why Ar didn't you give me to bowl in, in the final? Because I knew that Gilchrist <laughs> might hit over the stadium. He was because hitting. I went, <laughs> I went and told Murli, Murli, and he told me, he told me in his nice language. <laughs> <laughs> When in that Gilchrist group, was hit that, us all over. In that, in that group stage, I think Gilchrist didn't even score like more than 20 runs. He was out of form. So that's where you got him out in the group stages. But the mode that he was in that the final... That was 2000, 2007, yes, correct. Yeah. And the mode that he was in in the finals, um, we would have lost a few balls. Is that right? Mm. <laughs> okay, 2011, quickly. I think 11 was a brilliant campaign. I think we... We, we understood our team, the strengths, the weaknesses. We set up a good squad. We went through each and every game with a plan and uh, executed that. Um, played some really good cricket. Got to the final. I think, you know, I don't think we did anything wrong. I mean, winning the toss, we would have batted. India would have batted. Um, that's uh, their game plan. Uh, but no one anticipated the due to come in. Yes, we had some injuries in the semi-finals, so we had to make a, quite a few changes because of that. I know people have a lot of uh, issues with those changes, how we did that. But I think... Well, Angelo got injured Angelo got injured in the semi. Now, that's a big problem that's because he had oh, bowling and batting. Batting all around. And we did not have anyone to, to, to do that at that time because Tisara was quite young. And we bought Tisara in for his bowling, but we wasn't sure about his batting. So we had to make sure that... And Murali was carrying a groin injury. So he wanted to play the final. So we said, yes, he can still bowl. Um, because I remember he bowled with two steps in the semi-finals against New Zealand. So we had to have a backup. So that's where Suraj came in and played in that match out of the blues. Um, from where, But because his record against India leading up to the World Cup and all that was the best out of all the spinners. So we drafted him in, 
played uh, Tisara to his, for his bowling, and then we left out. I think it was Chamara, who was a batsman, but he wasn't scoring runs. And then bought in Kapugeda to replace him. It was a like to like kind of replacement because we needed some firepower at the back end. Um, so those were the three changes, if I'm not mistaken, um, we we made in that finals. And uh, uh, to be honest, if so. So this is probably something that not many people would have known. Like we had a combination for each team that in that World Cup kind of thing. We knew who we wanted to play. The only guy that we couldn't play, if Angelo was fit. Um, we would have played in that match. Was we would have left out one of the spinners and would have played the Lara Fernando. We wanted some extra pace against India, and that went out of the window when Angelo got injured. We just couldn't play the lar that extra fast bowler. So we went with only two fast bowlers, which was Nuan um, Lasit and and then obviously we had Tisara, who came in for Angie because we needed to cover for that all rounder spot. But otherwise, the plan was to play that fast bowler, extra bit of pace against India in one cut wickets because it has a little bit of carry. It has a bit more bounce, yeah. Bounce and, so combination-wise, that would have been our ideal combination um, to go for that. But we just couldn't go do that because of the injuries we had. And I, I don't think we played a bad game. I think you know, two seventy was the highest chase in a World Cup, um, even up to now. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so India batted well. I mean, we we had them under ropes for a while, but the spinners couldn't get into the game purely because the dew came in. And we practiced for three days in that stadium. Two days in the evenings, there was no dew. Um, India would have done the same thing, and they they said the same. I mean, if they had, if we were chasing that, we would have probably chased it down as well, because India had three spinners as well, which they played in, in that match. So yeah, I mean, those are things that you know there are a lot of ifs and buts when you lose. But I think I always say that the processes were right, the selections were right, the tactically we got everything right. So up to that point. So, uh, no regrets the way we had those World Cup campaigns. Yeah, it was. Yes. It was so unfortunate because we had played such good cricket and everyone was like uh, in form. Now, um, before I let you go, Myla, and ask you what would cricket look like when we come back, I just saw a comment from a youngster saying, what um, advice will you give a young cricketer? Now, you played as a young boy against men bigger, stronger, mentally, uh, how would you tune yourself? And the other thing is, if you're out of form, what can you tell that young guy? I think, the, the, I just, I think the first thing I've said as a youngster, the most important thing, you have to enjoy your cricket. I think if you don't enjoy the game, um, it's very, very tough. It gets even tougher if you don't. And even the time till you finish cricket, I think you need to enjoy it. So the best time to enjoy the game the best would be when you're a youngster. I think it shouldn't be a bird to perform and to do things and, and try and enjoy as much as possible. Um, form, I, I always have this debate with guys when they come and say I'm not in form. I'm, I'm, I try to ask them, how do you define form? And a lot of people struggle and to say, I'm getting out. So you get out anyway. So it's, it's nothing to do with your form. Um, you're supposed to get out as a batsman. Um, so I say, okay, I've got out four times or five times, I haven't scored runs in a season, I haven't scored that many runs. So I said, okay, fine, so tell me, how did you get out? So they'll describe and say, you know, I, I'm an open, opening batsman, I'm a number three, I got a good ball, I nicked. And a couple of times I got out driving here, got LBW, got run out. So then when you analyze that five times that they got out, at least twice or thrice been for good balls. So that means that, you know, the bowlers are there to get wickets as well. So technically, you probably played two bad shots and you got yourself out. And then the, the sequence is that, you know, you had a couple of three good balls as well, which you're supposed to get when you're a batsman. So the first thing people do is they put that negative thought in their mind saying, I'm out of form. So there's nothing call out of form and, and trying to get back into form. I think when you're playing any sport, any game, you practice hard, you've done this, you pretty much are in it all the time. It's just the, the sequences, what happens, how, how, you, how you take it on board as a, as a player is what defines form and not form. It's actually something that you put it in your head 
a negative thought process. Um, yeah. Sometimes people are hitting middle of the bat, but if you're hitting the fielder, you're not scoring runs. And sometimes you're scoring runs, edging people, dropping catches and all that. So how do you define form and not inform in that scenario? And at practices, you'll be hitting the ball middle of the bat. We go to the game, you get a f first ball, a decent rock and you get out. And I know a lot of that. Yes, so it's about how you process all that, and and then see. So any youngster thinking that I'm not in form, I'm I'm getting out, I haven't scored runs. That's part of the game. That's why you're a batsman because you have a split seconds to make a decision to score runs, and you don't have any way of rectifying that mistake as well. So you have one chance. You get out. You get out. Whereas a bowler, you can make mistakes, you can keep coming back, keep picking up wickets or whatever, it's fine. But as a batsman, you don't have that. So you need to understand that whole process and, and find what the solution is within yourself without putting any negative thoughts. I think that's how you define form and not form. And I personally don't feel that anyone is out of form. Great. Well, my last question before I let you go. You're on the cricket committee as well. Suggestions coming in. When we come back, how is cricket going to be? How do you yeah. see it? You have to be sensible, Russ. I think the situation to make sure that... I think that is the only way that, you know, you can um, pass on something is by saliva right now with the COVID virus. So the decision was to make sure that you don't touch anywhere. You're not supposed to touch your mouth and face and all that with, with the hands. So as long as you can have that discipline... Um, sweat is fine um, as long as you're not taking sweat off your head and all that but whatever is your forearm um, and from your trouser you get sweaty so you can shine the ball but there's going to be a lot of hand san sanitizers and all that going to be around with the umpires and on the boundary line so as long as as a habit you keep using the hand sanitizers and stuff like that um, should be able to manage and the whole point is to try and keep everyone on a, uh, a bubble, all the players being tested and all that. And then try and make sure that you control that environment. Because I think, you know, you probably can play sport. Um, and a lot of countries have started. I've seen in Europe, Germany already started their domestic football season. Um, there are a lot of talks about rugby starting in New Zealand and Australia. So It's starting next week. I'm excited. Yes. Excited. So Good. It's as long as like our boys probably um, start practicing first of first week of June. Um, you know, the cricketers um, under certain guidelines. I think you know you should be able to. But I think everyone going forward has to be disciplined and and make sure that you know at least for a while uh, we go with that flow so that we can actually have sports and and get back to normal life slowly. Good stuff, Myla. So looking forward to it because that's exciting time. We need live sport. Watching highlights and old news, it's not a go. Yeah. I'm hoping to talk to Davy, Dav Watmore, and talk to uh, him about 96 World Cup and early days. Last Any suggestions, Myla, that I can ask him? Should I ask him about Harare? Yeah, you could ask him about Harare. Definitely Harare. Golf course. Anything else? In that annoying thing where he comes and taps everyone on the on the... Uh, elbows and on the knees and all that. He has this superstitious thing, right? Remember, he used to come and yeah. touch it on the yeah. joint. <laughs> there we are. Pass, pass. He yeah. still has. To, he, uh, he. I also. Uh, he owes me oh, some money. Yeah, yeah. yeah but get it off him. <laughs> yes, Samutra, Ashray. Yes. Yes, so that's something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Myla, good uh, good talking to you, and I'm sure yeah. a lot of uh, our fans would have enjoyed it, and um, was also educational a bit of advice in there we'll catch up again with you soon hopefully yeah Russ, guys, stay, thanks. stay safe say hi to the family cheers bud will do will do thanks guys and hopefully i'll let you know the time that we'll be catching up with that more to talk about 96 and uh, what happened around those times on sunday i still have to finalize the time well mj take yeah. care and sort out who the real bandit is you or sanga yeah. <laughs> cheers guys